¿Cuál? Good evening, everybody. This is uh, the occasion for uh, Spanish experiences. And uh, I wouldn't like to punish uh, just Josefina and uh, the audience of my poor English. So with your permission, I'm going to, to continue in, in Spanish in order to present the rest of uh, my colleagues. Buenas tardes a todos. Ha llegado el, la ocasión pues, de compartir con ustedes la, la experiencia española en, el, en este interesante binomio agua-energía. Vamos a procurar hacerlo rápido, el tiempo es muy ajustado y simplemente me voy a, me voy a limitar en primer lugar pues, a, a agradecer eh, la oportunidad que se da a la Confederación Geográfica del Ebro de organizar pues, este, esta pequeña mesa redonda. Y sin más, eh, voy a intentar eh, definirles muy básicamente eh, cómo hemos estructurado pues, esta intervención. Para los que no, no sean de nuestro país, pues eh, España es un país en fin, de tamaño intermedio, con población media, situado en una latitud media, que en materia de energía comparte pues, buena parte de las circunstancias de otros países eh, occidentales. Tenemos una una notable dependencia en materia de energía exterior, prácticamente el 80% de la energía que consumimos pues la tenemos que importar, especialmente pues, procedente de combustibles fósiles de gas y petróleo, y eh, el agua toma, adquiere un importante papel, especialmente pues, en la componente de la energía que podemos consumir en forma pues, de electricidad. La, la hidroelectricidad supone un porcentaje aproximadamente un 25% del total de, del consumo eléctrico español, y tiene pues, eh, una conocida propiedad, y es que es almacenable. España es un país que ha apostado enormemente pues, por el desarrollo de energías renovables, eh, tenemos una, una potencia en energías, eh, sobre todo pues, eólicas, pues, muy importante, y la dificultad de esa energía es precisamente de su almacenabilidad. El agua es un vector, es una pila natural que permite pues, gestionar mejor la, la demanda, las puntas y, y en consecuencia, el sistema eh, energético global. Eh, el agua, por otro lado, en un país como el nuestro, es un factor de desarrollo económico importantísimo. Somos un We are a very arid country and we have a, a very a weird situation in Spain, uh, uh, very desert uh, areas uh, to be considered desert or desertic. Uh, the uh, water that uh, goes through our rivers is not up to 10%, so uh, we need to um, take into account uh, that we have to take care of for many generations on that water. And uh, then uh, it causes also a problem on food production. Therefore, the water has a very important role in farming, in agriculture. Uh, more than two-thirds of water used in Spain is devoted to agriculture or farming. And uh, 24 hectares of, uh, uh, seems to be a, a 50% of uh, the uh, value-added tax on uh, that industrial uh, situation. Therefore, the water is very important uh, uh, on the role that is uh, carrying out these days. And uh, it is uh, this country, as you know, uh, uh, has a lot of tourism and um, uh, therefore it has a very high load uh, of tourism uh, uh, in a few months of the years, uh, particularly in a, a very loc localized area as in the Mediterranean shore. And therefore, there is a bunch of measures, there's a lot of measures uh, in order to supply water uh, in a satisfactorily manner uh, as techniques of desalination, uh, which is very important, it's been a, a, an important development in our country. Um, they're going to talk about uh, it all. Uh, some of the components, uh, some of the persons, the speakers that we have in the table, as uh, for the um, electric uh, energy, uh, um, uh, is uh, one of them, and uh, 
it is a, a, a partnership that includes uh, several uh, big organizations from Europe as well. And then as for the agriculture sector, we're talking about 100 hectares of uh, irrigation and with uh, um, kind of a 100 year old infrastructures and uh, we need to uh, 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 modernize somehow uh, in order to optimize that use of water and uh, that is linked to the uh, um, um, uh, energy allow, uh, we, we're aiming uh, for allowing it to uh, um, uh, improve the irrigation and therefore allowing to uh, the families that live on that uh, to improve their lives too. And then Gavida Manueco uh, will talk about that effort and the development of technology uh, uh, and in seeking the efficiency of water. Um, uh, uh, and I, I will try to, to say like uh, more than 10 in Spain, more than 10 and um, probably among the first 10 in the world. And uh, they're going to talk about uh, how to look for um, that type of, uh, how to look for savings in water, how to look for efficiency in the use of water. And um, last, uh, um, approach uh, that we're going to see will be the legal uh, approach. How do we manage that uh, from the government or the uh, regulator side of it? And therefore, we count on uh, um, a, a partner from the uh, River Basin um, um, Authority here. And she's going to address uh, that type of issues related regarding the uh, legal uh, part of it and also we thought that it was important to bring a point of view a different point of view uh, that we've been talking about is the uh, impact that it has on the climate change change sorry um, um, it has been working a lot on that field in Spain and it has uh, widened um, his activities in Latin American countries. I'm going to be a kind of a tough moderator here. I'm going to ask everybody to stick to their times as much as they can. And um, um, I'm going to uh, uh, give the uh, work to um, the next speaker. So if you have a presentation, we can change this. But Jose Maria Marcos. Uh, I'm going to start uh, thanking uh, the authority of the River, Ever River Basin uh, to the invitation and uh, to be able to be here uh, to explain a little bit about the energy uh, power industry and also to talk about the synergies and collaborations and partnerships uh, in the field of uh, um, uh, sweet water in, uh, in our country. As for the electric part of it, uh, electric power, uh, we have a regulation on the uh, European Union that um, uh, um, uh, allows us to open uh, this type of businesses but in the case of Spain we had to adjust our policies and the market is totally open um, um, we can uh, market the electricity and it is uh, pretty much independent from the network um, which is uh, very considered to be used in a monopoly management uh, however the actual, the present situation, uh, any um, uh, legal person, any uh, individual can uh, uh, trade that uh, just paying uh, the access uh, to the net. Um, the situation is what it is and uh, during the last year we have incorporated an enforcement of the uh, European um, uh, 
uh, goals on the reducing CO emission, CO2 emissions and using renewables, uh, renewable technology, um, energies and new technologies that allow us to uh, save a lot of uh, fossil fuels and they create a lot of employment in, determine, in uh, certain areas where there's not such a lot of employment opportunities. And um, the only problem is that on um, some of these energies is that we hurry up a lot to uh, implement and um, install them and it has a cost, a high cost on this. It's not a problem. Um, we don't have to criticize this policy, but uh, we did not uh, pay attention to the costs uh, that uh, is uh, given us as of these days is 22 uh, megabytes, uh, aeolic megabytes, and um, uh, a lot of power, uh, photovoltaic uh, power. Um, last year, um, um, uh, we had 40% uh, uh, of production on this type of energies. We have advanced a lot in fulfilling the uh, targets and the goals of the European Union. Uh, but uh, we have not introduced the costs uh, that we were forced uh, um, to maintain uh, for this energy situation. So um, as of today, uh, the uh, present situation has caused, um, is, a, is a, a, an accrued debt uh, uh, around 27 million euro because we didn't take that into account. So uh, we need to take that into account, uh, 5 million euro uh, related to electricity power uh, uh, regarding the cause that the, uh, this government and last government is uh, actually uh, um, accounting for. Uh, we didn't account for uh, properly and this is the situation and the this is uh, growing. This was growing pretty much because this was not taken care of. And uh, as of today, it should have been like 10,000 million euro, uh, which is kind of uh, mm, uh, big if you take into account that the taxes that uh, we collect is like 32 uh, million euro. Um, so we got to the conclusion that we say that uh, that we thought that uh, we will uh, uh, pinpoint the uh, system. Con contributors will allow to pay this, uh, but and the administration will contribute as well um, in a third of it in order to reduce this debt that was uh, generated because of this. The agents um, during this year or last two years have seen uh, the income they had reduced in transportation, in distribution, and they have created um, different um, uh, problems. And the problems that we had basically in order to fulfill that target was that the uh, public deficit uh, administration could not contribute or with around 900 million that were foreseen. It was not very easy to uh, fulfill. Uh, this is not very easy to solve. Um, this is a very quick, a very fast explanation on the uh, is, Spanish electric system uh, of today. Um, if we're talking about some um, aspects related to water and energy, I would like to limit myself to uh, talk about some activities that we that have been done uh, um, regarding uh, the water um, and the electricity system with uh, 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 sweet water, uh, fresh water. Uh, and somehow, sometimes it's done uh, by uh, f funding, and the electricity power sector needs some kind of funding, and they will pay a tax or a canon 
on regulation on how to regulate these and um, um, on some works that the uh, government will be making on this and when they benefit from a public work um, or if they want to do that public work, uh, they will. Uh, it will be called for a tender, and then uh, later on, they will pay a, a little bit a, a, a tax or a fee on it uh, for the production they do. And uh, uh, there's there's other contributions like uh, the river Tajo Segura. Um, the transfer, uh, also the Tajo and the hooker it should have been only maybe a firefighter station, but later on they did, oh, par pardon me, it was only a pumping central, uh, but then uh, they decided to do a pure pumping central um, in order to um, have uh, water pumped uh, to satisfy the needs of the transfer of water in another attempt that so they were at the time in order to find synergies in the field of water and energy uh, it was needed to use the cogeneration energy in order to desalinate water uh, that allows you to create heat and electricity in a unique process uh, and at, in order, uh, while doing that um, that heat allows us to uh, desalinate water. It will it, that Im involved a, a funding, a very huge funding. Well, we also thought about recycling the centrals of uh, f fuel, uh, fuel and gas uh, in the shore uh, around the 90s in order to adapt them, in order to be able to desalinate water as well, since we had those plants available. And we abandoned the idea because they all were only used in very peak periods of the year. And then we had the issue on how to store the water during those periods. And we were talking about infrastructure of uh, the 50s. And um, then we abandoned that idea on converting those uh, plants. There is another one, another case uh, where... Uh, uh, it was successful. It was a coal plant um, uh, that were uh, together with another plant that were close by together. And um, in order to uh, uh, minimize costs, they uh, uh, had an agreement to work with each other. And um, uh, eventually the administration went into the play as well with that uh, uh, partnership. And we're trying to keep on uh, finding synergies between water and energy, but some of them are not successful. But as, as I say, the most important aspect is the contribution to electric power uh, to the uh, public uh, um, plants. Uh, and with these, and before they kick me out, pretty much, I finish my presentation. Jose Luis Perez is going to continue, and he is going to talk about the uh, energy saving system. más al inglés, yo creo. Yo te noto más, más, más a gusto, más sí. suelta en inglés. Es que estoy acostumbrada. Fíjate, curioso. Y al revés. ¿no? Uh, good, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, everybody, and thanks to Josefina. I uh, thank you, the, I thank the authority and the organization um, uh, to be here because the uh, people that use this water uh, we are using a lot of energy, and of course we use, we make a use of consumption of water. <laughs> and I'm going to uh, approach this uh, subject in a very different way. This uh, this conference today was the objective. The target was to produce energy, and. Therefore, with the consequence uh, to use water um, either to cool or either to use it for other purposes. And therefore, well, the purpose was to 
use water to uh, produce energy and uh, the objective or the target was to uh, minimize the use of water. Uh, for us, it's totally different. Uh, even though we also use that Nexus water energy, we have a fixed, a set uh, uh, water usage and according to new technologies, uh, irrigation and drop, we have to utilize this, uh, we have to use energy. What is the goal that we uh, pursue? We're trying to minimize the uh, consumption of energy in order to keep on carrying out the uh, this of uh, irrigation and we could um, consider uh, the Mediterranean countries as well um, uh, into this equation if we wanted to and the problem is that the world will need 40 more millions of hectares in order to attend the uh, feeding needs of the world and uh, some of the countries that are using pressurized watering, uh, of course, they will need to use energy. And our objective, uh, objective uh, goal, as uh, the, our, the rest of everybody goals, um, uh, will be to minimize the use of the energy. I don't see the European Union representative here. And... Uh, I don't see how he's going to listen to this presentation of mine on how to reduce the energy uh, and the usage of water. If we add up all the uh, irrigation areas within the European Union, in Spain we are the third. Uh, we can say that we are the third the third uh, country that uses irrigation. Therefore, if we want to uh, improve that nexus, water and energy, trying to optimize everything, we need to uh, um, count on measures uh, for irrigation. And the other other problem is the profitability of it. We produce uh, food for the global world, uh, globalized world, pardon me, and therefore, we introduce the energy as a new factor with the new uh, irrigation uh, technologies in increases the price of the final product. And therefore, our battle, our challenge is in order to minimize uh, that uh, price. It's not only for the price of the end product, but also to minimize uh, the energy usage, uh, which has an impact on the environment. Uh, this is going very slow. We are a, a watered area, and uh, we've been using that for 100 years. We have certain years on, uh, ongoing. So what we can say, we can say that uh, based on experience. There is a big extension. There is a, Big area is 150 hectare, hectares, and in Spain, is is a system of water supply for each and every usage that you have in within that irrigation area. And we are very pleased with that. We are we're called irrigated areas or water areas, but we are users. Um, we provide water, we supply water to uh, many uh, hectares of irrigation. Um, around 105 and uh, also to farming, um, to uh, farming installations as well. And as a, man as a manager of big quantities of water, um, uh, we have to, oh, okay. uh, obviously, we are owners of uh, very uh, important assets uh, like the concessions for or permissions from the government. Uh, uh, so that's the system that uh, governs or that rules in Spain. It's not the same as in the United States. Uh, um, uh, it's not, um, it's not a, it's not a private thing, it's just a public thing. It is uh, um, 
the government should give you permission to use it for a particular purpose. And uh, we have 105 uh, hectares of rivers, and uh, the 11 percent of water regulations in this water in this country. There's some water basins that have very nice infrastructures on this, and it will be um, some of them will go over 133 uh, uh, cubic hectometers, um, and this has a big impact in the electricity generation or power generation, which are, were not very clear in this conference. Uh, they didn't uh, quite specify between the consumption of water and the withdrawal of water. But for us, uh, the electricity is not a, a consumption. So if we take this all into account with all this uh, network that we have with big uh, water masses, um, um, uh, we have many places. Predios o como ustedes les llamen. Many. Uh, we have a high usage of uh, of uh, water and energy in many of the pieces of land that are. Uh, uh, Continue, century after century, these same problems. Water problem. The water problem was the star problem at the decade of 1990s to 2000 at the end of the last century in this country and in this um, Basin Authority, there was a high, a very vivid um, debate or discussion on the use of water and the conclusion was that the traditional methods of application, water application, uh, that is by gravity or by flooding or by lots, in different lots, had to be applied to pressurized uh, systems, that is by sprinklers or by Dropping, drop irrigation. And this entailed the modernization of the transport, the distribution and the application in the lots. <clears throat> that is, we had to modernize uh, in uh, hundreds of uh, years ago, we had to modernize. Noventa por ciento lo hemos solucionado. After 100 years, we had to modernize the whole system, and now we irrigate through pressurized systems. But we change the century, and we find a new problem, that is energy. The modernization entails to uh, use pressurized water, which is attained through the injection of energy. And once we use these pressurized water systems through pumping stations, we then uh, fall into the trap of the energy consumption. If you add to this the fact that in Spain the value of energy, especially electrical, hydroelectrical energy, has uh, been triggered, uh, has really increased a lot, then you have this graph, <coughs> the evolution of the power and the uh, trend line is very um, warming, warning, it's really, it has no end, it goes up and up and up. If this energy has no end, its cost is increasing eternally, then we have a profitability problem as entrepreneurs, as, uh, apart from the problem that this society is facing a problem of enormous, huge, energy consumption problems with the involved in the water issues. If we say that using water, that we have to use enormous amounts of water for cooling or for many other purposes, then you have to consider that water is our raw material, the main raw material that we have. Now, how we faced in our irrigation area the problem of energy. What have we been doing? This is a problem that has to be minimized. But of course the ideal thing to do or our ambition is to eliminate, to remove. Our conclusion was that it is possible to remove energy consumption 
in order to be able to irrigate in a, with a pressurized system. I beg you to think that we have 150,000 hectares of territory of land. You have to think that we have uh, enough uh, differences in levels, level differences or jumps, makes jumps, water jumps, so that, uh, of course, we could use uh, channels or canals through pressurized pipes. This is an invitation to the countries where you are foreseeing irrigation. You have to think that uh, water has not to, must not be transported by gravity. You have to channel it through pipes. We have faced this problem through the fact of uh, giving to the open air um, or providing to the open air structure some pipes that are distributed uh, the same way the um, scales of a fish are laid, or the fish bones, I mean, the fish bones. You imagine a fish and its bones, well, this is more or less the distribution of our pipes. And therefore, we are getting uh, pressurized water in the uh, headwaters. That is the essence of the thing. Of course, there is an added cost, which is how to fund these pipes. Fortunately, this country, that is Spain, which is very aware of the water issues, uh, we had funds in 2005 in order to initiate, to start this project. This project today is already carried out in 20%, and we are expecting uh, new amounts of money, new funding, um, so that we can in the end, our irrigators can have pressurized water in their lots, which is totally no linked to energy consumption for today and for the future. Of course, we have made uh, thorough studies uh, in order to know if we could have a return on these pipes in 20 or 25 years. And compare with this um, energy cost, you can imagine that uh, in nine or ten years, both costs are crossed. That is, we will not get a repayment in 20 or 25 years, but on nine or ten years. Of course, you can find everything in our website, and we are absolutely available to you for any information, further information. Uh, we invite you to visit our website. Thank you very much for your attention. Gracias, José Luis. Es difícil el esfuerzo de síntesis. En cualquier caso. Very difficult to summarize. And, uh, we're talking about a lot of channels that uh, transfer a huge amount of water. Now we have uh, technicians. Uh, desalination. Uh, buenas tardes. Um, Sorry, good afternoon, a little second. Now the floor goes to Gabriela Manueco. Good afternoon. As we have um, guests that are non-Spanish uh, speaking persons, I have my presentation in English, and therefore I will speak in Spanish, but the presentation will be in English. I will try to be fast. I'm going to make a little uh, introduction on what is Aquamed. It's a state uh, company that is 100% uh, uh, public, that is belonging to the state. It depends on the Ministry of uh, the Environment, uh, Agriculture and Forestry. And the goal of our society of our, uh, is, is the uh, uh, purchase of um, hydraulic works, works and the handling of projects in order to carry out these uh, water works and all complementary uh, works or jobs and studies. Uh, we have here a general view of the Almanzora um, of the Almanzora Caves and the El Serpis 
um, area in Valencia. The scope uh, is the whole east part, eastern part of Spain from Catalonia to uh, Gibraltar, to Malaga. The sh all the shore, the east shore of Spain. As for the main actions, uh, we have the generations of new resources, of course, improvement of infrastructure and management, the modernization of irrigation systems and the environmental improvements and the protection against flooding. And this is why I was speaking about the El Serpis Dam. Uh, you can see, identified by black dots, all the actions that have been carried out and we have 81 actions already um, finished. The uh, estimated investment is 3,720 million euros and what has been executed at the month of December 2012 was uh, uh, almost 2,700. Uh, part uh, was 1,997 million was belonging to own funds. Then uh, a little bit more, 1,000 million euros belong to European funds, and the rest uh, was coming from external sources. The uh, investment has been evolving. The uh, peak uh, of the investment was in 2008, and now we have 2,000 million euros per year. Um, you can see that desalination is 81 actions, as I said before, means 13% uh, of our energy cost. Here you have the uh, investment share, and we will have, I suppose, the possibility to have access to all these works. In the theme of Aquamed, Focusing ourselves on the issue of Aquabed, uh, we have 81 actions, and actions in operation, operational actions, 30, of which 11 are desalination plants and some treatment plants that have more consumption. All of them are big uh, facilities, big installations in Torrevieja. The uh, desalination plant of Torrevieja is the biggest one in Europe and is able to produce up to 80 cubic uh, hectometers per year. And Aguilas is also producing 60, up to 60 uh, cubic hectometers per year. With this situation, and in spite of the fact that in 2012 in Torrevieja was not operating yet, um, the um, uh, the power that has been contracted by Aquamed is 145 megawatts, and in 2020 we will have 320 megawatts. The energy consumption during 2012 reached 138, uh, 32 gigawatts, and we think that we will uh, have 1,750 uh, in 2020. This Points may be classified according to prices depending on power, voltage, and timetable. Uh, the uh, tariffs or the fares, you can see them here, and desalination plants uh, represent 99% of our energy consumption. According to the classification by provinces, the distribution corresponds to Almería and Murcia and Valencia, the first three. Uh, uh, Almeria, Murcia, and Valencia uh, have 17, 48, and 24 uh, percent consumption, respectively. How have we been able to deal with the electrical issues so that they will not have an influence on our production costs? As Aquamed is a state uh, society and is con uh, in the frame of the uh, public contract law, we have limited the way to uh, have a free, we have to guarantee the free concurrence and the transparency of the bidding procedures. Uh, we have a procedure negotiated with publicity, with advertisement, that can be only allowed in exceptional reasons or due to exceptional reasons. 
in this part, in this uh, way, part of the price of energy is regulated by the Ministry of Energy, and therefore the modifications cannot be foreseen. And on the other hand, the uh, energy consumption cannot be foreseen due to causes that do not uh, are not belonging to the society or the uh, company. And therefore, we had to make some negotiated tenders. And therefore, we open tenders for three months and for 12 months, sorry, and uh, we ask the uh, distributor companies to offer, to present a technical offer with the procedures to solve uh, incidences, uh, of course, always with flexibility in the demand and in the uh, management and the description of the model to control the flexibility of the demand, the proposals to handle consumption and the improvement and an additional elements that they consider suitable. A whole procedure is followed in order to open these uh, offers. And the moment that uh, well, we value or we assess the technical valuation and the economic valuation, and with the total score of the three best offers, we negotiate the energy price. The technical offer represents 20% and the economic offer F80%. As for evaluating the green energy within the uh, tender process and up to the year 2010, all the energy uh, given to Aquamed is green energy. This has been achieved because there is a specific chapter in the technical offer that gives up to five points. Remember that the technical offer is 20% or 20 points, I mean, and then the uh, technical offer presents the possibility to add uh, five additional points if the uh, renewable energies are offered or are included in this technical offer. In the, the uh, tender conditions, the bidder has to certificate a percentage of energy that has to be some supplied uh, as a green energy, and he has to fulfill it to comply with it, and otherwise he will have a penalty of up to del año. Um, well, this point uh, that depend on the percentage of green energy offered, in the end, five points, as I was saying, uh, there are possibilities to add more and more points depending on the offers and the, green, the amount of green energy that is used as, so as not to take more time I want to conclude by saying that Aquamed has obtained a loan on the or a credit on the FBI ABI the AIB I mean sorry and the European Investment Bank and the, there are some actions carried out within an action plan to uh, increase the use of renewables and reduce the, uh, elect the consumption of electricity, of power. Thank you very much. Mr. Can you please Alba, tell him that um, he's not using the microphone? Hola, well, uh, good afternoon. In this institution, I work uh, in charge of the users, which is uh, taking care of the organizations, as uh, Jose Luis explained to us. Uh, it's not only for the farmers that are watering their land, but everybody else. Uh, this will be an organizing support and that can uh, uh, be taken into account uh, for the two parts of it. There's two elements where uh, you can find an, a not very balanced uh, uh, relationship. Uh, is a conflict relationship. Sometimes could be a balanced one. The water is a legal go a good um, for everybody. In our uh, um, laws is a subject 
to the management and planning of the central government. On the other hand, energy is electric energy power, which I'm going to talk about related to water usage, is a result of an industrial process and therefore belongs to the, man the market. And the electricity, the main problem, problem is the uh, the hydroelectric hydroelectricity uh, um, we're talking the combination of a, a global um, uh, um, thing uh, to be used for a market product so we're talking about um, the protection of water as a, a natural resource which belongs to the government and it is a mandatory within our legislation um, and the management of water is supposed to be compatible uh, with the management of it and the management of the environment and also the generation of uh, energy although the uh, generation of energy was, liberal, was uh, open in 1997 uh, but we still need to uh, take into account the um, update on that, le that legislation and observes uh, that generation of energy as a general uh, economic interest. Therefore, we have administrative intervention, intervention on the management of the water usage and also on the generation of electricity. The state um, role on the uh, electricity uh, power was very important last century and uh, the great uh, park I mean the, the, the park of um, uh, electricity plants that we count on uh, uh, today uh, was basically uh, produced last century and um, it was because of a need of uh, uh, driving the uh, industrial uh, sector on the uh, building of uh, big dams and channels uh, that were devoted to uh, um, allow some uh, a lot of hectares to be uh, changed into irrigation areas. Uh, there was a lot of infrastructure construction involved and also little areas uh, of uh, certain river uh, riverbeds areas to uh, guarantee uh, to ensure those uh, river basins to stay as they were. Uh, there were concessions and permissions uh, uh, on a particular basis uh, provided by the government and they were given on a, a non-limit basis. And um, um, so we could see uh, um, the um, uh, government um, uh, managing a lot of the permissions given on the water usage. Um, the usage of water sometimes could be uh, uh, private, exclusive, um, sometimes. It could be uh, granted to a user or a, a group of uh, users, not only um, uh, that, but also the exclusive uh, occupation of a, a piece of a river, of a, a particular area of a river. But therefore, it needs to be a process based on a transparency and uh, it needs to be public as well. And um, the uh, concession or the permissions are given based on their competence. Um, sometimes there is a discussion if there is like a contract, if it's considered a contract or a permission. Uh, there's both sides of the opinions and uh, also some parts that we think uh, that um, is a mix of the situation and sometimes it could not be revoked um, according to some opinions but uh, uh, sometimes it contains elements that seems to be a contract uh, and terms that might be um, established between administration and the user. As they were talking before, some taxes that were paid uh, on the usage of water. Um, 
as I was saying before, uh, just uh, the permissions given for a particular usage or those provided by means of a public tender, uh, it all depends on the situation. Uh, they have different conditions, both of them. Um, we have uh, legal conditions that are uh, provided by the law, like the um, duration of it, uh, third parties affected, certain limitations uh, on the amount of water that might be used. Um, those will be uh, uh, particular of each uh, permission. And um, uh, that will be the just of the uh, real estate law um, uh, depending on the cases. And the permission regulations uh, there is a discretional uh, power on that. There is not such a thing of uh, somebody um, obtaining the permission based on certain requirements. Uh, but the government, even though there are some requirements, will decide whether to uh, grant or do not grant that permission um, uh, to um, those uh, applicants, uh, but they need to justify their decision. Anyways, the government will justify their decision, and they need to specify the uh, areas where that um, uh, hydrologic um, um, uh, should be used, how that hydrologic uh, supply should be used. Uh, it is a procedure that is subject to uh, publicity and uh, tender. It has a beginning, uh, has a, a follow-up, and a, a resolution or a decision pro a part of the process. Um, it's not the only process uh, that the um, um, electricity produce, power plants are subject to. There's other uh, processes that are needed for a plant, like authorization of the facilities, uh, uh, evaluation of the environment impact, and um, the process of uh, declaration of um, uh, public utility. Um, one of the challenges the administration uh, faces in the last decade is uh, the imposition uh, of, of the mandate on those users of water, uh, the limitations that uh, they need to fulfill in order to comply with the environmental requirement. Those limitations are uh, imposed um, uh, in order to fulfill uh, those regulations are general and therefore uh, satisfy in a coordinate mode the exploitation uh, systems. We need to uh, take into account the 45 article of the Constitution which uh, uh, sets for uh, the uh, rational management of natural resources and some other um, um, uh, provisions that need to comply with the environmental situation as well. And um, sometimes they need, we have to take into account that some users cannot uh, take, withdraw a lot of water because it needs to fulfill with the usage uh, downstream. Uh, and uh, uh, we cannot uh, take this into an isolated manner. We need to uh, think about the use that uh, one user, uh, the use of one user might affect the other users. Uh, uh, and the uh, regulations that uh, we have in our legal system is just to uh, should be that of um, uh, following certain order in order to uh, uh, ensure this use this appropriate use of water. And, and another one uh, related to um, electricity power plants would be the extension of the first uh, plants. Pardon me. Uh, 
uh, because they're very old. Uh, uh, they were 75 years, that's the uh, years that are uh, allowed based on the provisions of the legislation. Uh, one of the effects of this extension is the reversion of the um, state uh, uh, to the uh, government. And in this case, uh, for the authority of the um, uh, basin, and then the administration needs to face whether to tear down um, the facilities or to maintain those installation, those facilities, uh, to keep on exploiting them, either directly or by means of a new public tender uh, to give permission for that uh, exploitation. That will be depending on the uh, hydrologic planning um, based on the um, authority, the basin authority. Another challenge that we have is on the administrative practice on the uh, production of electricity based on water uh, is the reversible uh, uh, electric electricity plants, uh, power plants. Therefore, we find some lack of regulation in our laws, like the uh, permission rate. Uh, has no uh, actual application in the reversible plants. And uh, on the other hand, if the reversible plant has an origin on a pool that is uh, being profited uh, by another user, might have an impact on the actual users. Uh, these are uh, questions or these are problems uh, in which our, our laws and regulations do not offer uh, uh, proper and objective answers. And on the other hand, the users, as it was said before, have seen um, a lot of increase of um, energy uh, uh, prices, uh, like the pumping, retro pumping, using of uh, obsolete pools, and some things that are necessary based on the scarcity of uh, hydric resources and um, other uses of, uh, have other uses, other users have to do a high uh, hydric uh, consumption. They try to have a kind of uh, minimize that uh, exploitation, but uh, uh, they try to incorporate themselves into the production of electricity uh, in order to uh, take advantage of the uh, hydroelectric, uh, hydroelectric sorry, uh, uh, plants. I don't know if that's the case exactly of the uh, Aragon and Catalonia channel, but in Aragon we have a, a channel which is having three uh, energy plants, um, Bardenas and uh, uh, some other cases that are very much frequent. And the uh, river basin has seen the uh, an increase, co an increase of the cost on the exploitation of the infrastructures. And we needed to create uh, um, a collateral or uh, side pools, then uh, que technical questions like pumping and retro pumping. And the river basin will try to minimize that impact on the taxes that the users might pay on the exploitation on that. Um, since uh, they have to execute because by executing the rights uh, that uh, they have allocated on the uh, water energy, therefore the challenges of the future um, are f facing different directions um, that will affect the irrigation, the water for irrigation, particularly on the production of uh, energy, electric energy. Ultimo ya, 
Alfonso Andrés, nos vas a hablar pues, sobre un tema de candente actualidad, cambio climático... Voy a intentar ir lo más rápido posible sí, porque por ya favor, estamos porque... ahí en el tiempo de descuento. <risa> eh, de hecho, si me salto alguna, alguna slide... I'm going to be very, very quick because we are already uh, over time. Well, Mañana, ¿qué es lo que pasará, no? Uh, challenges of water and energy. Today, when we, when they speak to me about uh, water and energy challenges, I think of the analysis of climate change as one of the biggest challenges. Where well, these two fields that are very much linked, <coughs> as everybody knows, climate change has two aspects that are. World, accepted on a worldwide level. Uh, well, of course, there are always skeptics, skeptics for everything, but I think we all can agree on the fact that if we do not uh, mitigate this, uh, there is going to be, there is being now an increase of temperature and a decrease of rainfall. These two aspects have an influence on the amount of uh, the available water or resource and it also affects uh, to the energy production both on electric and hydropower energy uh, generation as, and in the other components that is the use of water as a coolant that is in all technologies apart from the solar and the wind energy water is a very important and essential component I would say in um, climate issues, all the impacts on consequences of climate change, finding water a uh, channeling vector uh, for these consequences, the IPCC uh, mentions all these things in a series of points, but we can basically say that uh, the uh, lesser availability of water Depending on the areas, it has more or less uh, impact. But also the uh, reduction of the uh, snow layer, the amount of uh, water contained in snow also decreases. That is reduction of the production of food as a consequence, direct consequence of or as a result of the, uh, the um, less amount of water that there, are, there is uh, available. So, therefore, the decrease of water also has an impact on the populations. And we can see Se puede we can see the analysis of water issues on the one hand as uh, the uh, image, the picture on the left hand side and the available resource that you can see on the right hand side. As you can see, Spain is not the country which is especially rich in um, water or water resources. And also you can see, this is the left hand side and what you can see in the right hand side, this is what can be produced at the end of the 21st century. Many cases when you have the studies of high emissions, low emissions and medium emissions, carbon emissions, um, they tell me, well, you're a very pessimistic person. Why are you fixed on the uh, scenario number two? Well, I'm not a pessimistic. If we see the evolution uh, of the uh, greenhouse gas emissions and CO2 emissions, the scenario that is more uh, likely to be produced is the number two, is the most pessimistic one. The IPCC is thinking that uh, new scenarios have to be developed that are even worse as the current ones. And in these scenarios, there are some data that uh, in some bases, the Duero, the Tagus River, the most important ones in Spain, the Ebro River Basin ha can have a reduction of 30 or 40 percent of uh, water resources. And in the basins of the Guadiana, of the Guadalquivir, uh, can have 40 percent or even, even 50 percent in some rivers uh, reductions in water. 
of course, this is very important and has a very important impact on energy as well. Here you can see the sample of what energy is in Spain, thanks to God. <coughs> the data I agree with what uh, Jose Maria was telling us before, that 40% of renewables. And it is true that we can see that in 2013 we have 14.2% uh, uh, comes from hydraulic and uh, the rest uh, is renewable. The influence of water on the rest of energies is very important. All the energies are very important. Is very important. Sorry. As for renewables, mainly water energy. Of course, solar energy and wind energy are also affected, but the uh, the impact is much lesser. So we will focus on the rest of them. In Spain, the use of renewables is being has been increased lately in the last years. Uh, it's been in maintained or even increased. It is important to value very uh, thoroughly the effects, the possible effects of climate change in the use of these uh, renewable energies and how we can adapt uh, energy production uh, and the handling of water in a situation, in a critical situation like this. Uh, finally, to conclude with, I'm going to tell uh, about a project uh, that has been funded by the INCLAM for the uh, Energy Latin American Organization, which is the analysis of vulnerability of uh, hydropower production systems uh, to the climate change and how and what are the options of uh, the adaptation options. Um, we are going to make uh, different estimations of the water resource in different uh, scenarios. Uh, taking into account the existing climate change scenarios uh, studied so that we can get to know the vulnerability of uh, water hydropower um, plants in Central America. Here you can see that the northern part of Central America is the most affected one by the climate change. Out of the 573 basins that has been, have been studied in Central America in the different temporal projections, the northern part is the most affected one. The southern part is a bit less affected, but it has also very important impact. You can see also that the climate change in regions such as Spain is going to have a deeper impact because the wetlands and the um, wet areas, all the experts and the um, academics of climate change indicate that the degree of affection or the impact in the very wet areas and tropical areas is going to be less important as for water resources than the impact of climate change in more arid areas such as Spain. Therefore, the ministry, the uh, basin authorities, the um, hydropower plants, the energy generators, the irrigation communities or farmers communities, due to one reason or other, if they have any relation with water, should be at least a bit concerned about it, a bit, a bit worried. At least they should uh, make themselves the question, ask themselves the question, what's going to happen? Uh, this uh, Latin American organization says that 2013 and 30 is going to be the year where we will see that climate change is going to have a very important negative impact on water resources. And 2050 is going to be a very critical year uh, uh, that is going to be a, that is going to have a very important impact for the end of the of this century or 21st century. And therefore, it's going to be uh, we're going to see a reduction of 75% in the water uh, bodies in Central America, for example. And the we can have a series of measures like mitigation, the greenhouse gas effects, where electrical uh, hydroelectricity plants have a lot to say. Another measure should be could be the um, better management of water issues, like uh, the well, the uh, Ebro River Basin Authority has a lot to say here as well, and all the basin authorities really. Um, 
to conclude with, I'm going to present some results that uh, I wanted to show you graphically. Here we see the contribution of water in different uh, climate change scenarios in an ad hoc uh, scenario for all months of the year for a single basin. The red line is the 2090 projection, and he, this is the projection of uh, central hydropower lo located in the same basin. The um, hydropower plants have, of course, uh, an uncertain future. And, of course, when we study all this situation, we do not have to study the historical series, but also the future series. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much to all the participants. We have the time that you want to devote to this. If there is any question, it hasn't been easy to uh, sum up the situation of energy and water in Spain, at least uh, the different sectors concerned that have explained so well the members of this panel. I hope that this has been useful for you. And in any case, uh, given the time, um, I think uh, there will be no questions now or any comment. I think we have a reception at the Al Jaferia Palace, so we better hurry up. And if you haven't visited this palace, I really, really recommend you to go. There's one question. This is a brief, very brief intervention. I'm uh, Mario Gaviria, uh, National Environment Prize, and I like this panel. It's a pity that we do not devote more hours or more time to this. I'm going to just express a couple of issues expressed uh, here. The intervention of Jose Maria Marcos, uh, that should have been uh, longer. And also the intervention of Ines Torralba is very interesting. We have one of the best uh, three electrical systems of the world, both in reliability and profitability. Well. If there is a problem, we can solve it, but there is a problem on capacities. We have double uh, capacity installed than the demand, than power. Uh, we should discuss not over prices only or pricing, but uh, we should go to the deepest uh, uh, roots of a problem, and this could link ourselves to, the, to Ines's presentation. Ines has said to us something that is very interesting. She has spoken of a big uh, hydraulic or water development. Spain also has one of the best uh, uh, management systems uh, worldwide through the basin authorities. There will be a climate change, of course, but there is uh, this variability, this variable, uh, through, thanks to this uh, storing capacity that we have. I think we are in a very important moment where maybe we have to rediscover the origin of the uh, Basin Authority. And we should speak of water and electricity, because in the end we have to think of this strange world in a very um, stagnated and we have a, a st with a problem of stag stagnation and a problem of electricity uh, we have also a problem with carbon and of course my proposal here which should be that the symbol of this recuperation that you have done the uh, recuperation that you have made of a uh, hydropower plant uh, after 75 years, this um, power plant moves onto the Basin Authority and together with the electrical companies start being an electricity producer and exploiter. 
is uh, almost the single public organization in Spain where corruption and chaos has, have not appeared. Therefore, my congratulations, really. Water becomes then... We're in, a, we're in a world completely renewable, and it's kind of weird because uh, coal, there's not enough uh, pollution uh, excessive for everybody, and then the water will be the storage of all the, uh, the store area of all the renewable energies. Uh, Spain is the third uh, world potent in uh, renewable energies, uh, without, I mean, setting aside uh, the photovoltaic energy, and think we're, we're in a run uh, for Spain that uh, we are not only producers of food but also electricity. And as for an electricity, I talk about, I, I include all the energies, and that will lead us to think uh, that uh, this will be uh, the key element of. Um, um, uh, I will uh, congratulate UNESA, which is the first or the second of Europe, and uh, you see that is the best way of uh, storing water. And so I have uh, foreseen a future, or I hope there is a future, uh, where we are happy, and where the authority of the basin becomes uh, authority that controls the water and electricity so we cannot have those things as sad as making a pole uh, that was built by the Spanish population and now is uh, belongs to the Italian government. Uh, probably one day uh, the uh, authority will recover that pool and we will be very happy together wor uh, working together. Uh, this is something that you're not uh, stating and uh, it's about a nuclear thing, uh, the guarantee or ensuring the uh, supply and the benefit of the companies uh, that will allow that allow them to international to, to become international. And uh, uh, now they will be the best uh, in the world, uh, Union Fenosa. <laughs> and uh, uh, as I say, supply. And the third one, and very important, will allow the evolution to the reversible, renewable energies because we have the best experience in the world. Uh, uh, some of them will be very difficult to manage. And the one that is very difficult to manage is the nuclear energy because we cannot pay for that. So it turns out uh, we have a big experience on reversible and renewable energies, but we need to multiply it in order to uh, store the renewable ones. And if Inesa doesn't understand that, and it, turn, it keeps on talking about the prices, by the way, they're very expensive, uh, even the farmers um, are complaining about it uh, because they need it. I think it's fantastic that we, uh, we really need to go to... Uh, very deep uh, restructuration and uh, very deep renewal as uh, Merkel is proposing, which is the most important and uh, wonderful woman in the world. Um, uh, she's uh, deciding to do, she has decided to do the same as in uh, Italy. Uh, uh, finally, I would like uh, we, we need to uh, have the German approach, not the French approach. The French approach has a nuclear uh, power uh, generation, which is uh, uh, leading to chaos. Um, uh, we need to uh, uh, abroad uh, to approach uh, that in a different way. I have to make some comments. I'm I kind of agree on those some some of the comments. We are the best one in the world. We're kind of a Ferrari uh, mix uh, with some other things, but uh, uh, we have reduced the emissions a lot. Uh, we have invested many technologies, and the problem is that is one of the most expensive in Europe, unfortunately. But we need to pay for that. And somebody needs to pay for that. We have invested in photovoltaic energy. Um, 
and the 80% of the production of panels, of solar panels, were uh, brought here. And uh, uh, we need to pay for that. We need to pay for that for 25 years now, uh, according to the uh, price index as of today. Uh, it's not that we want one plant of two of each type. It's not that we want it. It is not. Uh, it, it is something that we uh, need and we produce them on air, more energy and the thing is that the technology was mature enough uh, where the costs were reduced um, uh, as well. Uh, for the uh, store, uh, storing uh, ability uh, uh, as for supply we have, I mean, it's, it's like zero, it counts like zero because sometimes we don't have sun at night, as you know, and some of the times it, uh, the wind doesn't blow. So uh, if there were another, there will be a lot of blackouts. And finally, I mean, to wrap up, is the best uh, system in the world, but we have a lot of uh, gaps in it. Uh, it is a technology that is being done uh, very well in this country. France has a lot of nuclear power, and uh, it's cheaper uh, as well. Uh, Germany has a different uh, uh, um, approach on energy. They have something similar uh, uh, to us, but uh, uh, um, if there were not uh, countries uh, uh, that uh, work like us, uh, probably we'll, we will have been forced to reduce the price um, like they did in other countries. Um, uh, there's two main costs, the energy and the uh, employees' uh, costs as well. So the thing is turning out to be uh, uh, different. Um, then I want to thank uh, um, this compliment that you gave to the Vaccine Authority on the reconversion, the restructuration of that. I don't know which one would be. We're always trying to do that and uh, sometimes just uh, fulfilling with the law and with your dues is, uh, is enough and we're just trying to keep up to date on the uh, requirements of the law. And another uh, subject that uh, raising uh, based on Ines' comments uh, on uh, how to profit uh, uh, the electricity. Uh, um, the only thing that I have a doubt on is that it's if it is convenient uh, the uh, part of the administration to exploit directly this type of uh, uh, water situations, uh, but it's on the uh, situation of the market, uh, whether we can uh, uh, publicly manage that by means of a tender or um, maybe uh, should be a company uh, sh which uh, should uh, be uh, uh, taking care of that exploitation so the administration doesn't enter directly into that exploitation. Uh, so the administration is not going to share the dividends, you know, so it needs to uh, look for a collective and a, a, a social uh, uh, good or something. We are now acquiring some experiences and I think what it allows us to uh, maybe uh, to try to maximize the benefits, and uh, maybe not to maximize the benefits, but to establish some future conditions or terms if those usages could be uh, later on um, uh, granted, like environmentally speaking or other type of issues. I don't think it's the essence of the administration to uh, come into the production field, uh, but the good faith it has. Um, lack of a uh, competitive spirit uh, it, um, doesn't make it uh, probably um, will not carry with it uh, kind of uh, weird behaviors or not that clear behavior uh, and the administration sometimes uh, we need to explain everything the dramatic fall of uh, profits and um, 
the usage of this in certain circumstances helps to uh, uh, mitigate this uh, from the side of the regional governments, but uh, uh, they should evolve to a more honest way. And probably these, all these issues should be uh, seen or approached in a different way. As for now, the administration is fulfilling and complying with the law. They are very regular and we are all trying to um, meet all those challenges and get a balance, find out a balance out of it uh, in order to achieve uh, and uh, provide some satisfaction to that social demands. Um, and we like you uh, to know that opinion of us. Uh, which is not uh, a, a great uh, appetite for profit. Uh, as you know, uh, the administration uh, tends to take the maximum profit that they can take out of the things. And um, I think the, social, the, the society also values. Any more questions? Because otherwise we're wrapping up and we're gonna thank your patience, your time, and uh, um, I thank the panel here uh, um, that transmitted uh, all their knowledge, the, everything they know about this. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, until another time. <laughs>